Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be going over objects and methods in Python. Python is what people refer to as a object-oriented programming language, OOPL. That means that everything in the language is an object. An object can be anything, a value that you give a variable, the variable that you're assigning, um, assigning the value to, or really anything. And this is because everything that you use as a variable or a value or whatever is an instance of a class. And a class is actually the structure of an object. So there is a class that defines an integer. There is a class that defines floats. There is a class that defines strings, that defines lists, tuples, dictionaries, and everything else. Now, classes are a little bit more of a difficult subject for people, so here are the steps to take after you get done watching my, like, probably two or three videos on objects. Step one, get in the fetal position. I recommend that you do this somewhere like a bed that's comfortable or on the ground on a, a plush carpet. Two, you're going to want to try not to cry. And I would say, fulfill this urge, try not to cry. But three, cry a lot. So objects are going to be a little bit difficult if you haven't ever dealt with them before. Don't worry, it'll all get over soon. Uh, but yeah, don't worry, I struggled with classes for a really long time, did not understand them, so I'm going to make these videos long, but informative, so that people will end up doing the same thing as me. That, or I'm just very, very bad at understanding classes, and you should learn from someone else. <laughs> so, a object is an instance of a class. A class is the structure of an object. A method is a function that comes from the object itself, something that can be performed on that object. And where do all these methods come from? Well, you will either define the fun the method yourself, the same way you would define a function, or you will actually inherit from an object, which you should, and we'll talk about this later, but um, you'll then get the methods from there. Now, everything that inherits an object inherits from something above the tree, like a family tree. And at the very top is an object, actually, or a class definition for an object called object. Now, everything that inherits will have to inherit from object somewhere along the line, just like humans. It's like genetics, but programming. And so, if we do dir, which is the function that lists all the functions that you can perform on a object, then we can use that on the actual object called object and see what methods all objects will inherit. So dir object. We see we have dub, double underscore or as I'll refer to dunder because it's easier to say and I found like two people who ever said it on the internet and I was like that's genius. Um, so we have dunder class dunder, which will actually return the class of an object. We have dunder size of dunder, dunder string dunder, um, dunder init dunder, and, and those are probably the more common ones. Now each of these you can look up inside of help to find out what they do. Oh, and dunder doc dunder. But I'm going to talk about two two of them. Or, actually I'll talk about three, but I'll only show you an example of two. So, doing object dot underscore underscore or dunder class dunder left parenthesis says type of object will end up returning the object's type. So, if we were to put object here, we get class of type. Now if we do type object we get class type. They're the same thing. And the reason for this is because, well, some people come from a language that isn't object oriented, so they're more comfortable using functions like type rather than a method class, which is actually what more people do because type is a lot easier to understand than a bunch of double underscores and stuff like that. But it's more of a functional thing rather than an object oriented thing. 
However, you see that they both return the same type, and this can be used for a bunch of different things, and we'll probably end up using this in a project later on in this series. The other one I want to talk about is object dot dunder doc dunder. Now this gives us the string the most base type, and that means that nothing is more basic than object. Object is like the bare minimum. It has literally everything you need to be an object, but nothing more and nothing less than an object. So it kind of confirms what I was saying before about it being like the top of the inheritance of the family tree of objects and classes and such. But what doc actually does is it's supposed to represent the doc, the document string for whatever object or class you've made. And again, you can overwrite this or you can inherit it from object, but in most cases, probably like all cases, you want to override this doc um, attribute. By the way, I'm not sure if I said this, but attribute is like a variable for an object. You're going to want to override this attribute so people actually know what that does. And that way you don't end up looking like an idiot who just wrote a bunch of code and never told anyone what it meant. So, always rewrite your doc stream. Next is actually the dunder init dunder. And this is something that's really awesome and unique because it is the first method that will be ran in any object or class. So if we do object dot dunder init dunder, we'll get like weird errors like this where it says like it needs an argument descriptor blah blah. That's because you don't typically ever call init by itself. And it will say this um, ellipsis thing right there. It says it initializes x. Uh, you can see help of type x for the signature. But init actually is not something you're ever going to really want to call um, directly like this. And it, like it says, initializes x. So if you make a new object of x, init will be called as you're making it. And this allows us to do a lot of interesting things later on. And it'll probably be a big topic. I'll probably actually just make this one video by itself. But init is actually a pretty cool thing. So there you go. Init initializes x. It allows you to say like what should be ran automatically when that object is made. Like what variables should you grab and values and things like that. So kind of cool. And if you want, you can actually do something like a is equal to object, and a is now class object. a has these awesome little things. Oops. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> String. But um, you can do. Uh, nifty things with it kind of test all the uh, methods of objects everything that you will inherit and kind of get comfortable with these um, yeah and that was kind of an example of the how you actually use the init method when I said a equals object it set everything up with the init method and up above I did object dot dunder class dunder object if I do the same thing here you see that I get the same thing. Which kind of shows that these are instances of each other. A and object are equal. They have the same methods, they are the same thing, and they inherit from the same thing itself, which is nothing. <laughs> they are its own, they are the base class. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to PM me or leave them in the comment section below. Press the like button if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see my, any of my future videos. Thanks, and I'll be seeing you guys later.